Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're still doing our pandemic projects. Unfortunately, this thing is more stubborn than we would like it to be. And uh, to those of you that work in healthcare, teaching, frontline, emergency personnel, uh, hospitals, uh, doctors, medical professions, law enforcement, uh, fire, everybody, thank you for all it is you're doing as you are working to keep us safe during this pandemic. So uh, today I actually pulled one that I've been meaning to work on that I haven't had a chance. It's a Daiwa 403. And uh, this is probably a 70s reel, 1970s-ish. It was made in Korea. And actually somebody had asked me a question on the Daiwa uh, 7600 maybe. And I just uh, was looking through my boxes trying to figure out if I had one of them around. And uh, this isn't the 7000 series, but uh, this is one kind of in that same uh, same pattern. It's about a 30 or 40 size reel. This one's a little sluggish. So I'm going to take it apart. We'll figure out how it works. This one uh, has got a nice snapping bail there. That's always good to see. Uh, we'll show you how to service this one if you happen to have one. And uh, we'll all learn together a little bit more about how that 403 Daiwa reel was uh, constructed and uh, how it's uh, serviced. I like to start by uh, removing my exterior parts. So I'm going to take the um, spool off. It looks like we're going to need to service this. There's a lot of dirt and grease and junk up top here where the drag washers are. So we'll make it a point at the end of this video to go in there and, uh, and work on that. Since that's accumulated in dried grease, I'm just going to put a squirt of penetrating oil on there now and let it sit while we go work through the rest of this uh, particular reel. Uh, pretty simple, straightforward um, click mechanism. When you flip the bale, it's going to set this little rod and it'll come over here and it'll hit a stud. You can see that stud right there. It's going to hit that stud to cause the bale to trip. So uh, we'll take this off. We don't need to do much here again with that penetrating oil. Always a good idea just to kind of flood it let it work some of the older dirt and grease out. But we should be able to take this rotor off and uh, clean that up. All right, next up then we're going to remove the handle. Typically it's just a clockwise direction. We have the handle off. There's three um, Phillips head screws. So let's go ahead and take those out. Now, this is an old reel. I have no idea when the last time was that it was serviced. It could be yesterday or it could be a long time ago, judging by those... Uh, drag washers up up there. It's been a while and uh, you're always interested to find that. You can find new grease, you can find old grease, you can find no grease inside. And uh, just checking here very quickly. I like to take, if, well, I have to remove that screw, but I like to set that to the off position. The anti-reverse dog, if it has an override, I like to put it in the override position so that it doesn't uh, get in the way when we take this out. Because if your main gear sticks or something else, you could pull the spring assembly off that's working that, and that just becomes another task that you have to do in the real repair. These are three nice screws. They're stainless steel screws. That's wonderful. They don't, uh, don't rust. And now we should be able to remove the side plate. There you go. Very easy enough to do. So this one has a relatively simple design. It has a crosswind block with some old grease in it. It has a main gear with a stud on it that's going to ride in the slot of the, the uh, crosswind block. And because it's an offset stud, it's going to push the uh, crosswind gear up and down as it goes in. I mentioned that I took that anti-reverse dog off because I like to pull the main gear out. A lot of times when it's sluggish, it's sluggish because, well, you got buildup back here and, and old grease and grime. And if you're going to cl clean the reel, you might as well just take the time all at once to do that. I do use a penetrating oil as a cleaning or a solvent. I don't, uh, I don't use much other than that. And that will just help loosen the grease like you can see here. And I do use a series of paper towels, cotton swabs, and, uh, and other things to, uh, to just kind of mop up after that does its job. Make sure you run it inside the channel there. And as those of you that watch the videos or those of you that are observant right now, you'll notice I do have a uh, latex glove on my hand. That's to keep things like what we're just working on here kind of off my hands if I can. And uh, 
I recommend that you use that as well. Probably off camera, let's bring it into focus then. I do use a parts tray, it's the bottom of the milk tray. And every piece that I take off, I generally try to put in there. There's a couple of big pieces from time to time that I leave right on the deck like that side plate there. But for the most part, I do like to take them and um, put them in a central repository, which is my box. And uh, that parts tray will help me to uh, locate all the parts when it comes time for reassembly. Now this reel is relatively straightforward, so you don't need to worry too much about it, but you can still lose parts pretty easily. It's not that unusual at all to uh, be working on something, have a screw there and just kind of knock it off and well, then you're kind of on a search and destroy mission. All right, we've cleaned that up. I'm going to use some fishing reel grease. Give that a good, uh, good coating of the grease before we reinstall. A lot of folks ask what the grease is. It's pen precision wheel grease. It's generally available online. You don't need a big tub. That tub will last you forever if you're not uh, doing lots of reels like I do. So don't uh, don't be afraid if you, you see that the uh, quantity available is a one or a two ounce container. That's going to last you a long time if you're only working on a few reels. You don't need a lot of grease uh, to maintain the reels. Okay, so I just cleaned up the, the inner portion of this main gear. I checked all the teeth as I was doing that. I want to get a nice coating of grease on the inner wheel as well. That's because the uh, cross wine block is going to ride on that. All right, once I've cleaned that up, we're going to put it back in. Can I use your finger, make sure it spins easily, which it is. Let's come over here to the main body then. There's a pin that holds this assembly on. It's right here. And you want to take that pin out so that you can remove the rotor. Sometimes there's a little lip you can grab. Sometimes you need a, a little needle nose pliers. Whatever it is, find a way to get that pin out. There we go. It's kind of like a little bread uh, nail. And that's going right into my parts tray so that I don't lose that. You lose a pin like that and uh, you can wind up scrapping the whole reel. All right, the axle shaft pulls out from the top. This cross wine block's got a lot of old dried grease on it, so we're going to get that out. And a lot of times this is what real service is all about. Just cleaning up the old stuff, giving it a fresh... Uh, coat of lubrication where the greases are needed, a little bit of oil where that will be helpful. And, uh, and then just putting it back together again and taking it fishing. It doesn't take a long time. Uh, those of you that are watching this, this video probably will run less than 20 minutes and yet the uh, reel will be ready to go fishing again. All right, that's cleaned. So I'm going to put that into my tray. Same thing with the uh, axle shaft here. This, this reel was sluggish. So it may be that we have some dry grease on that axle shaft. So I'm going to use some light steel rolls. This is a 4-0 steel roll, which is not very abrasive at all. It's more like buffing. And uh, we're just going to clean it up. And then I'm going to use my hand to, to feel it to make sure that uh, it's all smooth. All right, we have a, uh, looks like a 12 millimeter nut up there. I'm going to use a deep socket for that. This, this is a tool that Mitchell put out for the Mitchell 300 reels, but it works on any 12 millimeter nut. That's what this is. I'm going to pull that up. There's a little lock below that. We can remove it. And uh, you can push your pinion gear through and we can complete the cleaning. And this reel again is pretty darn clean. And uh, surprisingly ready to go fishing again in a, in a short period of time. We have some buildup of some old grease there, so I need a, something like a little scraper of some description here. Just using a screwdriver, it's as good as anything else. But take your time now to do the proper cleaning. You won't regret it in the end. And dirt is the enemy of a fishing reel, so Get that old stuff out of the way quickly. Here's a little uh, washer that uh, belongs on top of the pinion gear. Don't lose that. And that's probably what was backing up some of this other stuff here. All right, I'm going to a quick little squirt here again for the penetrating oil, a little bit of a cotton swab. 
So if you're watching this and you're enjoying it, I would ask you to please subscribe to my channel. Subscriptions are what kind of keeps my channel going, keeps it vibrant, and lets me know that, uh, you know, what the community is, is like. And, and by the way, the benefit to you is you don't miss any of the videos, and I do post frequently. So if you, uh, if you like Fishing Real Repair, I would ask you to subscribe. If you have a, a reel you're working on, it doesn't have to be this reel, but if you have a reel you're working on and maybe you uh, have a question about a particular feature of the reel or maybe you're stuck in terms of the um, uh, reassembly of the reel and the like, then uh, let me know and I'll try and uh, answer uh, any questions you may have about that reel, I'll try and get you back on track. Uh, a lot of times folks will open it up, forget to take pictures, which is a recommendation that I always have, and uh, then when they go to reassemble, they've forgotten a particular sequence or something. Okay, check the teeth on the pinion gear. Get a nice coat of grease on that. And we're just going to slide that up from whence that came. I put that little spacer washer back on there. Underneath, you want to just do the same thing. Clean out any dirt that's under there. Just use a paper towel for that. And if there's any kind of accumulated stuff, get that out of there. We've already oiled that. There's just a little bit of dirt there, so I might as well do all the house cleaning. And then put some oil onto that spring assembly here. I'm going to use an aftermarket product called Relex. It's also available on the internet. Just check it one more time. Hold your pinion gear when you go to reinstall the rotor because it will push down again just the way we pushed it out. Reinstall, grab that nut, which I left on my table, didn't put it in my parts tray, and that's an example of when I know I'm just going to put something right back on. I don't bring it very far. If there was a lot more pieces and parts here, that would have been in the tray. And then this is a traditional winding, clockwise tightening. I'm just going to grab the ratchet, put that back on. All right. Next up then is the axle shaft. We're going to coat that with a light coating of grease. Don't put too much on because when you go to put it through the gear, uh, pinion gear here, it'll only, and you can see how it's just kind of bogged up there. It's just going to scrape off any extra, so that's kind of a waste. I need my crosswind block now. And this is always interesting. This is why I say take pictures. Because this crosswind block has a pinhole on one side and not the other. And it has a bump on one side. It's flat here and a bump there. And if you install this upside down, which this would be upside down, uh, you're going to run into trouble because it's going to bump up against the top of the case. So you need to understand the orientation of the pieces that you're working with. Usually you can do that with a schematic diagram, but sometimes you can't, maybe they're not available. And what I would tell you is, if you don't trust your memory, and most of us can't trust our memory, then go ahead and take the pictures so that you know which way it goes. All right. Slide your axle shaft through Line the hole up. I like to use a centering pin to ensure that I have that hole set. Then find that little pin that we took off. Get that back in. Make sure it's pressed all the way down. Notice I have a little brush hair here from the grease. Let's get that out of there. This side of the assembly is ready. Now you need to mesh the two. So this is kind of an eyeball thing, just look. Straighten it out until you have it inside. 
And then you know you have it inside. You can hold the case. Spin it. And if your axle shaft is going up and down, then you've, uh, you've set it properly. All right, let's go back and put the three screws in. I have two or three because I have that anti-reverse dog is off. So I'm going to put the two up top in first. Then I'll flip that anti-reverse dog. And again, if you if you left that anti-reverse dog on when you pulled that main gear out, it would have caused that dog to flip in further and you wouldn't have been able to seat the main gear properly. Okay, let's grab the... Uh, a handle here. So it's a well-made reel. It's simple in design. There's nothing wrong with that. Simple, simple design rules in my mind. And if you can get a simple design that uh, is... There you go. Look at that. Boy, that took the sluggishness right out of that. Simple design that works. Well, that's bonus, right? All right. I have to add that um, WD-40 or penetrating oil in there. Just kind of taking some of the glop out of here. This glop is a technical term. Now I'm going to pull that clip. You notice I'm holding my hand on the spool as I remove the clip because that clip can fly. It's a spring. This is the clip that was removed. It's got some dirt on it, so I'm going to just wipe that down. I'm going to put that right on my table there because I won't go far. My guess is that I have a hard washer in here, but I'm not sure. Okay, so I only have the one. The bottom one is the anchor. So this doesn't have a lot of max drag in it, but it's probably not designed for that. And we have a uh, well, we have a leather washer. Isn't that interesting? So that leather, leather washer was stuck, so that wasn't a very effective drag there. So I'm going to just take that steel wall again. And I'm going to get the old remnants of the leather off of this. The leather washer can be reused. I was kind of thinking that we would have a, uh, a fabric one, but that, uh, or a solid one, like a, a plastic washer. Now I'm putting drag grease on it. This is Cal's Universal Drag Grease, another reason why I use my hand uh, with a covered glove. It's a tool in this case. I'm going to go ahead and put that washer back in. Put the top washer on. And we can put our clip back in that groove. Start it on the one side and rotate it around. Until it's set. And you'll see it's set when it's in all of those grooves. And actually this one it's didn't quite lock up there. There you go. That one's in the groove. Okay. So there's just a little bit of dirt left here. We'll clean that up. And uh, this one's going back out fishing. So it's a nice, simple design. Oh, got a little piece of the monofilament left there. Might as well get that off. Into the trash bin with that. All we need now is the, the button adjuster. So this is a nice example of a Daiwa's 70s, 80s, I don't know exactly the date on these, but uh, my guess is late 70s, early 80s, Aiden Korea reel. Look at that. This one's ready to go fishing and I'll guarantee you it'll catch the fish today just as it caught the fish back in the day. Nice solid design. I wouldn't have any problem taking that out. Interestingly enough, no ball bearings, right? Just straight, uh, straight bushing and uh, there you go. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. Again, please subscribe if you want to see more of these. And if you have any comments or uh, have any questions about any particular reels you may be working on, 
or you're thinking about buying and you want to know a little bit more underneath about the reel, well, then just leave it in the comment section and I will try to reply to you. Finally, if you have a reel that needs service or repair and uh, you don't want to do it yourself, well, you can contact me via email on the business card that follows and I'll be happy to provide you with repair information. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.